Hi everyone, Dr. Triya Malde here. Welcome back to another video where today we are going over the topic Marfan syndrome. Marfan syndrome is autosomal dominant multisystem disorder characterized by abnormal manifestations in the skeletal, cardiovascular as well as ocular system. It is caused by mutation in a gene called FBN1 or fibrillin 1 on chromosome 15 which codes for fibrillin 1 protein. Now FBN1 gene code for fibrillin 1 protein, one of the three fibrillin subtype in Marfan syndrome due to gene mutation, fibrillin is either non-functioning or not in enough quantity which leads to fewer functional microfibrillin results into less tissue elasticity. Uh, the typical facial features observed in Marfan syndrome include elongated face, flat cheekbones and a posteriorly positioned jaw which is also known as retrognathia, dip set eyes, down slanting palpable pressures. Abraham Lincoln had features of this but did he have Marfan syndrome? Increased linear growth of long bone is a common finding and generally results in tall stretcher. With long limbs, the torso length, the leg length ratio is often reduced while the arm span to height ratio may be increased. So here it is arm span greater than the height as well as tall stretcher, long arms and long legs. Thoracal lumbar coliosis as seen in this image is also commonly present. Ribs overgrowth can cause pectus excavatum where the chest where the chest goes in or pectus carinatum where the chest, chest points, points out. Other common skeletal manifestations could be hind foot valgus or pace planus. They have long thin fingers as well as toes which is also called arachnodactyly that is reference to long legs of spiders. Increased joint laxity as well as arachnodactyly are common and when both present combination can give rise to couple of signs. The wrist sign is positive when the distal phalanx of the thumb and the fifth finger overlap when the wrist is grabbed with the opposite hand and the positive thumb sign is the entire distal phalanx of the inducted thumb is visible beyond the ulnar border of the hand. A variety of ocular manifestations can occur such as ectopia lentis where subluxation of corneal lens there could be myopia cataract glaucoma as well as retinal detachment but the most serious features are cardiovascular aorta dilates over time which is a risk factor for aortic wall insufficiency which is also known as aortic regurgitation where blood leaks back into the left ventricle during diastole aorta also undergoes cystic medial necrosis in which there is degeneration of the wall of the aorta. aorta both the dilatation as well as the necrosis weaken the aorta making it susceptible to aneurysm, dissection and rupture. All this combination can be life-threatening. MS is also a risk factor for mitral valve prolapse. Now, although it is autosomal dominant condition, the phenotypic expression is highly variable. Affected parents may not even be aware that they have it and may not get family history positive of the disease. So, the diagnosis can be made if two or more of the following are present. Family history of Marfan syndrome, ectopia lentis, aortic dilatation or dissection, causal mutation in FBN1 gene. It is important to note that a minority of parents with MS do not have defined FBN1 gene mutation. Here there is a simple mnemonic to remember a Marfan syndrome for the exam purpose. Starting with the word Marfan itself, M mitral valve prolapse, A aortic aneurysm, R retinal detachment, F fibrillin defect, A arachnodactyly and negative nitroprusside test and S subluxated lens. This is another flashcard where we, you can remember all the features related to Marfan syndrome. Syndrome. It is autosomal dominant, there is a mutation in the gene FPN1, tall and slender build, build disproportionately long arm, legs and fingers, abnormally curved smile, breastbone that protrude outward or dips inward, heart murmurs and extreme nearsightedness. I have made a very beautiful videos on this, the link in the i button. Although there is no cure for Marfan syndrome but there are treatment per some of the clinical features. Now echocardiography screening is recommended at 6 to 12 months of interval. Well, consider treatment with beta blocker and advise them to avoid caffeine stimulant, weightlifting and high intensity contact sports. The addition of angiotensin 2 receptor blockers may also be required for patients with an aortic aneurysm. Low to moderate intensity exercise is also beneficial. If eye lens dislocates, it can be removed and re replaced by an artificial IOL. If aortic dilatation is too severe, it can be repaired surgically to prevent complications. So that's all about today's video i hope you all understood and learned well please let me know what other topics you would like to learn from me till that time take care of yourself study hard study smart bye